Welcome back to Broken Electronics. I'm Lee and I'm so glad you could stop by today. Uh, this video a little different from a lot of videos. and As a word of explanation, uh, I have made videos that have not you know, seen the light of day yet. Uh, most of the videos relating to PowerPC were things that I did not judge to be time sensitive, so I just kept scheduling them on out. Well, then things happened. Things like uh, the Classic Mac Pro issues with Big Sur and then Monterey, which needed some serious coverage, uh, and even the Monterey issues with the MacBook Pro 2015 MacBook Pros. Uh, quite a few things in there that I really felt needed to get out. That's been pushing uh, a lot of those PowerPC videos back for quite a ways. In fact, the ongoing series about repairing the G3 Blue and White uh, was recorded over a year ago now, and it's only still a couple more episodes yet to go. Uh, in any event, the focus of today's video is 104 Fox and the loss of 104 Fox. In a lot of those PowerPC videos that are upcoming, you will hear mentions to 104 Fox and versions of 104 Fox that are now very, very outdated. So I want everyone to realize that I recognize that. Now, a little bit of background here. Uh, in late 2009 or early 2010, Mozilla announced that they would no longer be releasing Firefox for the PowerPC Max. It was the end of the, end of the road. And someone stepped forward, a man named Cameron Kaiser. Now, I'd been familiar with Cameron Kaiser for quite a while. Uh, I, used to use, I used to be a Netscape Mozilla champion, um, giving support to those browsers. Uh, I loved and used the Netscape application suite and then its successor, the Mozilla application suite. In 2000, early 2006, Mozilla went all in on Firefox and stopped releasing the application suite. Cameron Kaiser jumped in and aided, I guess, by a small team, has kept going with the SeaMonkey project, uh, which continues that Internet application suite. If you're not familiar with it, web browser, email client, uh, ICQ chat, uh, excuse me, IRC chat, uh, and uh, newsreader, and an HTML editor, which still works. It's not really uh, under active development now. Uh, anyhow, I had discovered in 2009 with my old iMac G3 running Mac OS 9, the wonders of Classzilla, and keep me going. And at that time, it was a functional web browser in a way that it really is not today. Uh, and 2010, it was probably more like 2011 when I picked up a uh, Power Mac G4 Quicksilver and working with that, discovered the joys of 104 Fox. Again, a Cameron Kaiser project. Now, Cameron Kaiser is not a computer professional. He's uh, a part-time developer. He's a medical doctor. Uh, and in fact, I, I don't know how much this had to do with it, but he left his position as the chief medical officer of Riverside County, California, right about the time that he announced the end of active development on 104 Fox and what the development that was going on with Classzilla at that point. Uh, I won't go into the politics about that. You can Google it and read about it yourself. I will state for the record that personally I'm in complete agreement with Dr. Kaiser on this and I certainly wish him well. So what this video is going to focus on from this point on. Where do we go with our PowerPC machines? What web browsers can we use? Because we do have options. And if you want to see what those options are, 
please stay tuned. All right, this is the third time I've tried to record this clip. Uh, Screenium, for some reason, has been misbehaving. It's crashed about three times. Uh, all right. In any event, where do we go from here? Well, first of all, the easiest standpoint. Uh, a developer, let's open up for interweb PPC. Goes by the name of Wicknix here on the uh, Mac Rumors forum. This is this is the thread where he first announced interweb PPC, which is a version of 10.4 Fox to lead us into the future. Uh, so there we go. Now you can do as I have done, just to bookmark the uh, Wicknix uh, GitHub repository where you've got the latest and greatest. There's the G3 version, the G4 version, and the G5 version all ready to go. Very easy to download. The downloads do not take very long. But let us imagine that you want 10.4 Fox and nothing other than 10.4 Fox is going to work. Well, there is always the possibility of rolling your own. That is an adventure, but it's certainly doable. However, if we go here to Macintosh Garden, uh, yet another developer, Chris Jones, cousin Chris, <laughs> we're not really cousins, but uh, anyhow, uh, has given us the unofficial 10.4 Fox development toolkit, which automates a great deal of that process. You do need, and make sure you read these notes if you decide to go ahead and do this, uh, you do need to download the appropriate Xcode, depending on whether you're running Tiger, we need 2.5, or Leopard, we need 3.1.4. Uh, download that. That will give you a package installer and you install Xcode. Once Xcode is installed, you can download the appropriate, depending on whether you're running Tiger or Leopard, the appropriate uh, unofficial developer toolkit. Uh, note that, as he says here, builds created in Leopard will not work on Tiger. Uh, he does not say that builds created on Tiger will not work on Leopard. Uh, all right. Now, I have done that. Once you've downloaded it, again, you get a package installer, which will install into your applications folder, build 10.4 Fox. All right, I'm going to go now to uh, a camera capture, because Screenium does eat up a lot of resources. Uh, and we'll go through the process of actually building 10.4 Fox with this tool. If you're interested in that, please stay tuned. All right, so we'll, we'll get this started. And remember, we want to prepare to time this. So, of course, I, I downloaded things. I have installed them. I have used this already. When I've done this, though, it's been, okay, where do you want to build it? put it right in the desktop okay sorry about that and we've chosen that and now we have our terminal okay would you like to build interweb or 10.4 fox i'm going to choose 10.4 fox i am going to choose okay yes so we can build any of the Possible ones G3, the 7400G4, the 7450G4, or the G5. I'm going to build it for this machine. And now we're going. So we'll start the timer. Now, as I said, when I did this, I started running, oh, say about 11 o'clock before going to bed. I got up, I think I checked at like 8 in the morning, and it was done. 
I have no idea when it finished, but then the maximum then would be something the order of nine hours, uh, but it could have been less than that. It does take a while, though. I, I will guarantee that. All right, so I will keep an eye on this. Uh, I'm going to go cook dinner and little things like that, but hang in there, and we'll let you know how things are progressing. Stay tuned. All right, an interim report. Uh, according to the timer, we're about 42 minutes into this, and keep saying things like warning, warning, uh, <clears throat> but it, it is rolling along. There are times that it will seem like it stalled, so if you're actually sitting there watching this, which I don't really recommend, <coughs> but if you are, uh, don't be a faint heart. Now, I have probably too many experiences in recent months of trying to get Big Sur to boot on classic Mac Pros. Huh. If you can see my video adventures on that on that topic. So I'm probably a little a little paranoid about things stalling, but I have no reason to think that this isn't going to complete. So anyway, we'll probably be back with another interim report or two, so stay tuned. Well, okay, we've just uh, gone past the two-hour mark and this appears to be rolling along, showing the same thing over and over again. One thing, of course, there's absolutely no indication of how long this is going to take. So my, my initial thought the first time I did this was just setting it before I go to bed and then <clears throat> having it when I woke up uh, gets through all of that. Uh, but I am curious for the sake of this video and for our own understandings here to see how long this is going to take. And keep in mind, this is a heavily upgraded example of the most powerful PowerPC machine Apple ever released. Uh, so, if you're doing it on anything less than a G5 quad, chances are it's going to be quite a bit longer than this. Well, anyhow, stay tuned. And we're done. Now, it's actually somewhat less than that. I was over on the Mac Pro watching YouTube videos because you can't just stare at this nonstop. You'll go out of your mind. But that's not that bad. Now, we can guess it's somewhere between two and a quarter and two hours, 20 minutes. Uh, all right. So, where's our cursor here? Here we go. Quit out of terminal. And here is our brand new 104 Fox. I actually have uh, Interweb PPC currently set as the default. All right. Rolling release, it's always going to say that. Uh, is anything different between this and the one that I did last week? I don't know. Okay, we have active web browsing. We've gone to Google. All right. Uh, so, yeah, that, that's not that bad. Now, remember, of course, as I said earlier, this is the a heavily upgraded example of the most powerful PowerPC Mac that Apple ever released. So we need to keep that in mind. Uh, this machine is going to be faster, really, than anything else you might run across, uh, at least in the PowerPC architecture, of course. Uh, now, the plan would be 
to use this machine to roll out all of the browsers for G3s, G4, 7400s, G4, 7500s, and the G5s. Uh, I've done this on Leopard, uh, looking at the notes uh, from Chris Jones. You really would have to do it on Tiger. Fortunately, I can boot this into Tiger. I have another quad, uh, which could also be used uh, for this. So I could churn these out. Uh, the easy answer, of course, is just to go to Wiktix GitHub repository and download the latest interweb. Uh, but interesting to be able to do this and to have this kind of control. Uh, regardless how you choose to do it, web browsing on the PowerPC machines is not dead yet. Uh, we can go on for a while uh, and we will see where this leads us. Uh, hopefully to quite a number more years of very, very fruitful uh, PowerPC usage. In any event, be good to other people who need it and deserve it. Be good to yourselves. Every bit of good we do in this world has to start from that. We'll make this world a better place. It isn't yet, so please take very, very good and careful care in these difficult times. We're going to be back. We will. I am going to make sure at least one more of those... Uh, G3 blue and white videos comes up before I throw anything else in, although I do have some more timely things coming up, to be sure. Uh, and, yeah, there's there's just a lot more. G4s, G5s, uh, Mac Pros, all kinds of things. So until those things are available in the channel, this has been Broken Electronics. <laughs>